This is Modern Persian Food, a culinary podcast for today's food enthusiasts. We talk about classic Persian flavors, modern recipes, and embracing culture and identity through food. I'm Bita. And I'm also Bita. Welcome to our show. Today in episode 97, we're going to walk through how to order in a Persian restaurant. Are you hungry? If so, grab a seat and get ready for your mouth to water. I'm here with the lovely Bita June. Hi, Bita. Hi there. I'm excited to talk about Persian food in a Persian restaurant. Yeah, we're going to walk through from start to finish. Appetizers, specialty items, drinks, kebabs, horesh, rice, and dessert. So let's get to it. Let's start with those appetizers. What are your favorite appetizers to order in Persian restaurant, Bita June? Yeah. So Persian restaurants are like so fun. I mean, it's like, I feel like I'm a kid in a candy store when I go into a Persian restaurant because I know all the dishes and like, I can't wait to kind of dig in and decide what I want to eat that day. But going into a Persian restaurant and starting off with some appetizers, a lot of times it's already there on the table, but sometimes you order it, but is fresh herbs and like feta cheese or the little foil wrapped butter as like a sabzi khordan is always like a really great place to start because you're kind of getting some of the fresh flavors that you're going to see laced throughout the other foods of the meal. And it's just like a brightness and a little bit of a palate cleanser as you kind of dig into all the other delicious foods. So I would say starting off with like a sabzi khordan or nun panir sabzi for the table is a great way to start. Yeah, we often will meet up you know, on a special occasion, and there might be multiple family members or a big group. So we'll just start ordering appetizers. And the biggest challenge is not to get too full because we do want to be hungry for the main course, which is usually some form of kebab. Yeah. But we'll always get solid shirazi. We'll always get, that's the one we just talked about last week. If you missed our episode, it's the bright Persian salad with cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, and citrus dressing. So we'll always get that and we'll always get a yogurt is nice to dip some bread in that you'll probably have with your herb and nut and feta cheese appetizer. And we get masta musir, which is the elephant garlic or shallot yogurt, really thick and delicious. That's the yogurt one we usually get. Sometimes we'll get masta khiar, but I feel like I make masta khiar a lot at home. So we usually stick to masta musir. And then sometimes, depending on how hungry we are, we'll often get an eggplant appetizer, which I love. Yeah, yeah. So the masukhiya is just yogurt with cucumber and sometimes with some dried herbs in there as well. But the eggplant dishes really are kind of very special because I just love eggplant. I love the lusciousness of it and the creaminess of eggplant. There's usually two different kinds of eggplant appetizers. There's the kashke badamjun, badamjun or badamjun, depending on how you say it and kind of what dialect that you're speaking in. But yeah, the kashke badamjun usually has some sort of like whey or a yogurt byproduct called Kashk. And the other one is Miza Garsami, which also has eggplant and garlic in it as well, but also has like tomato and egg in it as well. What I love is actually using those appetizers more like sides to like have them alongside the main courses of the meal. So you might want to like hold off on ordering all the appetizers or just order a little bit of extra or make sure you keep a little bit extra on the plate so that you can actually enjoy it and pair that with the main courses. Yeah, there's some restaurants that there's one in particular in our area, in the Bay Area, that has its own stone oven where they make bread. And so the bread Mm, comes out fresh mm -hmm. and warm. So it's really hard not to fill up if they're bringing out the bread. But yeah, every restaurant's different in terms of their offerings as well. I had something that this particular restaurant called Borani for the first time. It was an eggplant Borani. It was so Mm -hmm. delicious. I went home and tried to emulate it. But yeah, each restaurant will have a slightly different menu and what they call things as well. If we're a group of more than a few people, we'll normally get a pitcher of dur. Yes, dur. Okay, let's talk about drinks. So dur can be a little bit intimidating to people if you've never had it before, or even if you've had it before. It, it has kind of like a very unique flavor. It's basically made with yogurt and it's kind of effervescent has dried mint in it and it's sometimes maybe like more of an acquired taste but it's pretty salty and how else would you describe dur? 
Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is to watch the face of someone who's trying it for the first time. And it's usually not a great face. Of all the times I've taken a Persian restaurant virgin, <sighs> in only one case did the person like their first sip of duh. I think because it takes you by surprise. Mm -hmm. It's a little salty. It sometimes has fizz. You know, it's like a milky dairy-based yogurt-based drink, so maybe not to everyone's liking. We love it. We have grown up eating it, and we associate it with going to a Persian restaurant and having kebab. But yeah, I would say, because there's some other cultures that have yogurt drinks that are sweet, that it might take you by surprise. Yeah, it's a little unexpected. A lot of people definitely cannot have their chola kebab without a nice cold Coca-Cola Oh, <laughs> next to it. So I would say like soda and Coke is probably another drink that you can have with your meal. This is definitely something that's like a little bit refreshing and crisp is delicious. And then of course, just tea, right? Tea is kind of one of those drinks that's very classic to Persian food and Persian hospitality in general. So tea is always like a great thing to have at a Persian restaurant. Usually it's kind of brewed with either like cardamom, it's served hot and usually in like these beautiful handled glass mugs. The Coke, the soda took me by surprise, but I now remember the same guy that likes to have his egg on his rice is probably the guy that's having a big Coke too with his, it goes together, I guess. But my mom, the grandmas like to have their tea, some traditional Persian tea. My mother-in-law likes to have her hot water with mint. Mm -hmm. Persian restaurants do serve wine. And occasionally, you know, if you're in the mood, you can have a glass of wine with your chela kebab. Yeah, and actually some of them have like really great cocktails, a lot of them featuring pomegranate juice or unique Persian flavors. So definitely check out the drinks menu at a Persian restaurant as well. Yeah, now for ordering, there's a couple of different ways you can order. You can decide to each order your own plate, which be forewarned, if you order your own plate of kebab, the way that it's traditionally going to be served is with a massive portion of a mound of steaming rice and a huge portion of kebab, usually two big skewers. If you think that you can't eat that much rice or you don't want to take home the leftovers, you can request to have your plate be half salad, half rice. That's something that we do a lot. The other way you can order is family style, and you can just order a bunch of different kinds and get to try them all, which they will bring you know, the kebabs all together in a big, huge platter, and then everybody will get served their particular rice. Do you have experience doing it both ways? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, again, it's whatever way you prefer it. And if you, you know, kind of like to just have your own plate and not have anyone else share it with you, then you can definitely kind of go on your own. But yeah, I mean, I think it's beautiful when it's like family style, especially when you have like a big group of people, it's fun to do it that way. And you have the opportunity to kind of try a bunch of different kebabs or whatever the foods are to try a little bit of each one. I kind of get like food envy from other people. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I want to try that. And oh, can I have a piece of your kebab? And da da da. And I'll, do you want to trade or switch a little bite? So when you do it family style, it's easier to get a taste of everything. That is so funny. Another thing we have in common, my family calls me a food vulture because I <laughs> am eating my food and I'm enjoying my food, but yours looks really good too. So, I mean, I will ask for a bite, but then I will go in and I'll eat half of yours. Yeah. I mean, I'll try to limit myself, <laughs> not have a huge <laughs> bite, but yeah, exactly. But speaking of kebab, so like... I think the most common type of kebab that you're going to get in a Persian restaurant, and I think when people think of Persian kebabs, a lot of times they think of the kebab kubide, which is like the ground beef kebab. And for everyone listening, we did have an episode, a handful of episodes back, just on Persian kebabs. So we'll just give you a little top line here about the specific kebabs. And if you want to get a bunch more detail, feel free to listen to that episode. We kind of drill down into all the different types of delicious kebabs. But you kind of really can have your choice of, you know, the beef kebabs in the form of of kubide or chicken and you can get chicken that's like beautiful and marinated in saffron and lemon juice and onions and it's like super beautiful or you can have lamb so really you can kind of take your pick of other different kind of kebabs I think that when I go to a Persian restaurant, I typically have kebabs in some capacity. The way that the restaurants are able to kind of like char grill it and the way that you kind of have the skewers of kebabs just hovering over a flame and really getting like those beautiful marks on it is like the restaurants can do that really well where it's going to be harder to do at home. So definitely include kebabs in the mix of the food mm -hmm. that you get. 
Yeah, and there's starting to be a lot more choices and variety, particularly with chicken. I've seen now that there is chicken kubita. Mm -hmm. So that's the ground version kebab. I've seen it available in chicken. They make it boneless. They make it bone in. They make this like flat kind. I don't know. There's a lot of different versions. I want to take a small tangent from Persian restaurants just to say that not everybody is going to have a Persian restaurant available to them. So you can still kind of use this guide when you're going to a Middle Eastern restaurant. But if I'm going to go to a Middle Eastern restaurant that's not Persian, I actually am not going to get their ground beef kubita type kebab. I'll probably get either the chicken or the lamb because I feel like a lamb, especially like a lamb shish kebab, is still mm -hmm. gonna taste really good to me, but the spices aren't gonna be off. So there's like this flavor and taste that I'm expecting uh -huh. that I'm used to from a Persian restaurant that I may not prefer in a different Middle Eastern restaurant that sure. adjusts it. So I'll get lamb there. Yeah. If you are a vegetarian, there's also options or a pescatarian. You can usually order a salmon kebab. You can also get veggie skewers. There are the salmon or shrimp kebabs, mago, is how you say shrimp, the veggie skewers that you were just mentioning. And also we're learning about other like kind of meat alternatives, like kind of like the beyond meat type of kebabs as well in some new restaurants. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, kebabs definitely a staple of eating at a Persian restaurant. Yeah, I mean, if for some reason you get to a chilla kebab and for some reason you don't want to get kebab, although we're highly encouraging you to try kebabs in a Persian restaurant, for some reason, maybe you just had a burger or you're just not in the mood that day for something that heavy, you might choose a khoresh, which is a Persian stew. They're often available on the menu. Some restaurants have like a khoresh of the day. They'll have horma sabzi on Monday, something else on Tuesday. So just check the menu. Yeah, khoresh I think is actually a really great option in a Persian restaurant. Like I said, I typically tend to go towards the kebabs. But, you know, the other day I had such an intense craving for gourmet sabzi that I had to go to like across the bay to go to a Persian restaurant to be able to get this beautiful gourmet sabzi. So gourmet sabzi is the classic Persian stew of all the different chopped herbs and it has kidney beans in there and it's typically served with beef, although there are vegetarian options as well. So what I think is really special about getting khoresh at a Persian restaurant is that a lot of the khoresh can be pretty labor intensive. So if you have a craving or if you want to try a different khoresh, going to a restaurant and trying it is going to be a really easy way to get access to those flavors and taste it out for yourself without having to cook it. So definitely do check out the khoresh that they have at restaurants. You know, if you wanted to try like fisinjun or the gourmet sabzi we were talking about, or just see what it tastes like with the classic limu amani in that khoresh, you can really go and get it from your Persian restaurant. Good points. And the ones that I'd most often see would be the gourmet sabzi that you just described. And the other one is I often see the khoresh qayme, the yellow split pea stew that usually has a stewed beef or stewed meat in there. And at some restaurants, they have specialty items such as the tarig available. Yes. And one in particular I know will actually serve the tarig with the two kinds of khoresh that they have served on top of it. So they'll lace and cover the tarik with khorsh and the other part of it, they'll put some gourmet sabzi, which is really, really beautiful and nice because you get to taste it and still have your kebab. I like that option. Oh my God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm so hungry. If you're lucky, they might have fess in June and that's the pomegranate, mm -hmm. walnut, chicken or meatball stew that's so luscious and rich and beautiful to taste yes i'm so hungry oh my god that sounds so good traditionally the cello is the white fluffy rice served with kebab sometimes they'll have specialty other rices that you might be able to try sometimes it's seasonal like they might have a sabzi polo close to Persian New Year, which is the herb rice. Yes. Or they might have bakali polo, the fava bean rice. Or they might have zeresh polo, which is the tart barberry rice that is very buttery and a little bit sweet and sour and super delicious as well. It often served with chicken. Yeah, that is classically served with chicken. I think the sabzi polo is classically served with fish, with sabzi polo mahi. And the fava bean rice, the bakali polo, is classically served with 
Lamb Shank, my local Persian restaurant in the city, has it every Sunday night. That's their Sunday night special is the Bokhara Polomaiche, which is like my favorite. So yes, to your point, those kind of mixed rice dishes are like super delicious and cozy. And, and if you're craving it or if you want to try a different rice dish, that those are all really great. But the white rice in general, the cheddar that you were referring to, this beautiful mound of basmati rice, typically decorated with saffron on top. And what that is, is that basically they take some of the rice and they add the saffron to some of the rice and then they kind of sprinkle it on top as like a garnish. Following up to a point you made earlier, some people actually do like having a raw egg yolk in the rice. They have it displayed kind of like on top of the rice and then you mix it up and it makes the rice all kind of like gushy and super flavorful and sticky and delicious. So if you're up for it, and you really want to have the full experience, get an egg yolk with your cello and also put a few of those foil wrap pads of butter underneath your rice and get ready for an amazing experience. And not to forget that there is the somar sumac, which is super delicious on top of that rice, on top of all of the kebabs that we mentioned earlier. It is such a like staple of a Persian restaurant table is to have the ground sumac as like a uh, addition a condiment basically to all your different foods. Mostly used on the meat or kebab, but really you can put on anything. You put on your rice, you can put on your salad, mm-hmm. and it just adds even another layer of tartness. Yeah. Now, for soups, our family doesn't really go for soups. Again, I think we're just saving room for the main course, but mm-hmm. I have seen some soups in restaurant menus, such as the traditional asha reshte, Persian herb bean mm-hmm. vegetarian soup. I've seen lentil soups. Maybe if you don't want to have a big, huge lunch, you might choose like a soup and a side or something. But worth noting is that I think in Persian culture, a lot of times people will have this like biggest meal of the day at lunchtime, eat this wonderful big meal and then go home for your siesta and nap, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. That sounds great. It sounds like a perfect day to me. <laughs> <laughs> or like a mid-afternoon, just because it can be quite heavy. So you want to have give your body time to digest it. Yeah, Absolutely. But those soups are really good. I know that there's some places that actually just do focus on different types of soups. You know, when I was living in New York, there was a night market and then they would have ashirishte. And the nice man, he would make this like big pots of ashirishte and sell just ashirishte. And there are other restaurants that just focus on like DZ, which is like this obgushed basically soup that you have at night that you would go and it's just like a DZ mm. restaurant and they go and, and everyone has like a whole culture associated with it. And you go late at night and you sit on these like kind of bench type of things and you sit and you have your DZ opgush, which is super delicious. I need to get out more. I really, really want to go to one of those DZ restaurants because I'm a huge opgush fan. Yes. Yeah. We should do that the next time we're together. That's on my list. Mm-hmm. That sounds delicious. If you're doing takeout, you can order in this way. It'll probably come with the kebabs all together and the rice all together in a big tin tray. Mm -hmm. And you can get your salad shirazi with the dressing on the side or the dressing mixed in. And we hope we've inspired you. I know I'm so hungry. I can't talk about Persian restaurants without wanting to run to one right this moment. And I think I might. I know. (laughs) Well, I hope you've left room for a little bit of dessert action. We did talk about it briefly in last week's Ask the Beats about desserts in a Persian restaurant, Mm -hmm. where we both said what our favorite thing to order was. So I had mentioned Zulbia Bamiya, which is this beautiful fried lacy dough that's soaking in this syrup that's super sweet and flavorful and delicious. And I recently learned that I actually do love eating Zulbia Bamiya cold as well. I had some leftover one time and I put it in the fridge and it was just even cold is super, super delicious. But it's typically served at room temperature, served alongside a beautiful glass of warm Persian tea. That's one of my favorites. And Bichajun, tell us some more about some desserts. There's a unique dessert you should try if you have room, and that's falude. Falude is made from rice noodles. It's aromatic and light. And it's often served in sort of like a tall, almost like a cocktail glass um, ice cream bowl with you can order it makhlut, which means mixed, half Persian ice cream and half falude. And you can squeeze some lime juice on it. 
and just take a spoon and it's again a nice refreshing dessert to have and you can always save room for a little bit of falude and basseni in my opinion yeah absolutely if you don't want to get like a full dessert you know there's also options like creme caramel or flan which is kind of fun but if you don't want to have a full-on dessert what you could do is you could get a little piece of baklava or you know persian cookies and dates are very classic ways to kind of end your meal again with the tea or the hot water and really kind of round out the beautiful dinner or meal that you had hopefully with your friends and family and enjoyed and got to be exposed to all the wide range of different flavors in persian cuisine Definitely close it out with some tea, especially if you're not going home for a nap. (laughs) Yeah, it helps wash it down and also just give you a little bit of caffeine punch to get on with the rest of your day. Yeah, maybe a sugar cube. Yeah. So today's Ask the Beats comes from Reza Fazel in Iran. I got this question through Instagram and his question is, did you taste an ingredient that you didn't love at first? Then a friend or chef cooked with that ingredient and you turned out loving it. Hmm. Did you have an answer to that? I actually am pretty open with food. If you had to ask me a food that I don't like, I would kind of be hard pressed to kind of come up with something that I don't like. So I'm pretty open when it comes to food. I can share maybe an unexpected thing that someone taught me recently that I had no idea that this would be as delicious as this is and actually is like now on the regular for me. I was at an event and I was actually helping pass out some of the food stuff. And there was this beautiful, abundant platter of sabzi khordan, which a bunch of different herbs. We had basil, there was tarragon, there was mint, parsley, and probably some cilantro along with green onions and radishes. And it's just such a fun way to kind of eat your food. This is what we were talking about at the very beginning of the episode that is usually at the table. I love sabzi khordan. I love having it fresh with every bite, especially with the richer stews. It really does add brightness. So I was talking to one of the ladies in this event and she was talking about how she takes fresh herbs and puts it in her glass and pours hot water over it. And so, you know, we've talked about doing this with just mint, like an alternative to tea. But she was like, with whatever herbs I have on hand, I'll just throw it in there and pour it over hot water. And that's actually now like my favorite way to instead of having like regular water or regular tea, because I don't always want to be drinking tea all day, it's a nice way to have hot water, but with like a bunch of flavor and aromatic smell to like make it even special. I actually have it right now in my cup. Oh, cool. What kind of herbs do you have in there? I just have basil and cilantro. Oh, how interesting. But can you believe it? It's like a fun little drink to have with just fresh herbs. Only have heard of doing it with mint. Cool. What is your unexpected thing? The thing that I didn't used to like eating was beets. Beets? I don't know. I didn't like the flavor. I didn't like the texture. Beets on Ask the Beets? What? Beets. I'm sorry. Ask the Beets. In my first half of my adult life, I didn't think I liked beets. And then I started going to some fun California restaurants and seeing these beet salads. Well, I ordered this beet salad. It was just so aesthetically pleasing. It had golden beets. It had regular beets. It was colorful and it was one of those like farm to table restaurants. And Mm -hmm. it had, you know, like toasted nuts and goat cheese. It was Mm -hmm. so delicious. It opened my eyes to loving beets. (laughs) And from that moment, I started to cook beets at home. And I now look for golden beets and I look for beets and I make them at home. I wrap them in tin foil and I bake them and they are so delicious. I just completely changed my mind after experiencing the farm to table chef restaurant beet salad. Oh, I love it. I'm a huge fan of beets. So I'm glad that you are now on the wagon too with being a beet lover, <laughs> considering your name is Beta. And we're talking in the Ask the Beats section. You know, we actually talk about a really easy beat recipe, Masto Labu, when we had Maz Jabrani, a fun comedian on the show. We shared that recipe with him to make Masto Labu. But I always have like the shrink wrap beats from the produce section in my fridge. Hmm. I have some in there right now. Like I always love having beets. So that is definitely a good one to have. Can't beat them, join them. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy to be on the beat board. <laughs> I'm happy to be <laughs> to join the beat train. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you, Pita June. Thanks to everyone listening and hope you have a great day. 
You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Thank you.